Richie, it's great to have you here in Australia and it's been a pleasure working with you at St Joseph's College here today. Uh, can you tell our supporters why you decided to start speaking out about the harms of pornography, especially to young men? Yeah, I think um, I've had this like public evolution in New Zealand of my understanding throughout pornography and sex work and uh, you know, gendered violence, and I'd always talk about it as I would learn things. And I had increasingly public platforms. I did like small radio to national radio to going on the television to being an educator. I think the reason I do it now as like a main focus of my work is because I want young people to have healthier, happier, kinder, uh, romantic and sexual relationships and better mental health because no one taught my generation about these sorts of things. So I've had to spend 20 years unpacking what I've been conditioned with and try to put better stuff in and better understandings in. So I'm trying to, I guess, pay it, pay it forward, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. And, and, and doing this work and talking about it publicly for a long time, I've had so many female friends, young women, strangers on the internet disclose either the negative sexual experience they've had or the sexual violence they've experienced or the daily harassment that they endure. And, and porn is a part of the culture that creates that, that normalizes that, that violence and that sexual entitlement. And there's so much research emerging now that makes that kind of irrefutable. I'm not saying every young man who looks at porn is going to become a sexual offender or even a sexual harasser or abusive in their relationship, but so many do that we need to have these conversations to protect our women and girls and also to help young men have healthier, happier understandings. About and how are young men responding to the message and what are some signs of hope that you might be seeing for example, are there young men in New Zealand who are making a decision that they don't want to be socialised and conditioned by the deforming messages of porn and porn, porn culture? Porn, porn, porn. Mm. Yeah, I think um, genuinely positive. Uh, I tend to break things down into a more... Rela I don't give very academic... I mean, everything's based in academia, but it's not a very academic presentation. I try and make yeah, it relatable. Accessible. It's accessible. Yeah. And I use you know pop culture references and stuff. And when you talk with kids on their level, I mean young men young, on their level, they really get it. Like, I think young men want to be good and they want to do the right things. And I'm, and I'm hopeful for, for young men. I think in fact we're having this conversation now that we're in a high school, a, 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 a positive sign to that cultural change is possible and people are waking up to the conversations that people like yourself have been having for you know, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, really happy to be in that space and uh, I guess giving giving back in a way, yes. and I think I think you know I, I have to be optimistic, or else why do this? Absolutely. Yeah. Same. Same. Yeah. Well, I hope we can keep working together yeah, and try too. and turn this around. Yeah, yeah. me Thanks too. So Thanks much. so much.